Coming in at number 5 we have Ross Island. Located on an island in India closer to Southeast Asia than India, the island is known for beautiful beaches, unique marine life, coral reefs and largely undisturbed forests. But beyond the islands beautiful views and stunning wildlife lies a dark past. Ross Island is one of the 572 islands that make up the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Now the island is a ghost town where the remnants of a 19th century British settlement lie in ruins. In 1857, reacting to an unanticipated Indian revolt, the British Empire chose remote islands as the site of a penal colony. And Ross Island was one of them. The British first arrived in 1858 with 200 Indian convicts. The deadly task of clearing the thick jungle fell upon the inmates, while the officers stayed on the ships. Moreover, the development and town built at Ross Island began in 1858 and the prisoners were forced to build its buildings. The island was transformed to resemble a British town, with houses, offices, clubhouses, bakeries, stores, churches and everything else that the British would not miss when they were away from home. The British ruled Ross Island for more than 80 years up until nature was against the development. In 1941, a gigantic earthquake affected the island and left the town on the island completely ruined. The British thought Thought rebuilding the town would not be worth it and overnight left the island in complete ruins. Abandoned in the 1940s, the island is now being reclaimed by nature. Homes, a massive church, ballrooms and even a graveyard all are in varying stages of decomposition, being taken over by an unyielding forest. In at number 4 we have Tlingua, Texas. Near the Mexican border you'll find the town of Tlingua, Texas. In the 1800s it was discovered that the area in which Tlingua was built was plentiful in cinnabar, a red mercury sulfide, from which mercury can be extracted. This caused an influx of miners to the area, but it wasn't until Jack Dawson's discovery and production of the area's first mercury in 1888 that it drew a population of 2000, and by 1900 there were 4 mining companies in the area. When the Chizos mining company opened in the mid 1800s, workers and their families quickly relocated to the Tlingua, Texas. The Chisos Mining Company was founded and began operations in 1903 near Tlingua, Texas. The company specialized in the extraction of quicksilver and mercury. In 1799, Charles Harvard discovered that compounding the element produced fulminate mercury crystals, establishing its marketability. These crystals are useful in the production of gunpowder cartridges and shells. Mercury production had peaked during the First World War began to fall, thus Chiso's mining company had filed for bankruptcy and the miners began to trickle out. When the mine went bankrupt in 1942, Perry sold it and moved away. The population was around 3,000 at its peak, though it said that everyone up and left the municipality in the 1940s once the mercury was picked through. Thus, the once busy city became the ghost town we know today. It is now home to 110 people. By the end of the war, it was an abandoned ghost town. In at number 3, we have Nevada City in Montana. Miners settled in Nevada City in 1963 along with establishing their homes and businesses in this new town. Located in southwestern Montana, the town is one and a half miles from Virginia City. The town was thriving up until 1876 when the gold miners moved to other promising sites. In 1896, the Connery Place and Mining Company destroyed most of the city's buildings. The company dredged the gulch and later abandoned it, leaving heavy wooden barges. This abandoned town being haunted is old news as the Nevada City Hotel is reported to be frequented by the apparition of a road agent who lost their life nearby, according to online sources. Visitors have also reported hearing footsteps in the hallways and seeing shadowy figures standing behind their reflections in mirrors. Additionally, the spirit of an older cowboy figure who never speaks but lurks in the hotel rooms and even sits at the bar in the Virginia City. Back when the hotel operated, guests also complained of a weeping woman, always in the same room, only to be told there was no guest in the room in question. In at number 2 we have Custer, Idaho. The mining town of Custer was born in 1879 by gold miners looking for their next gold hotspot. Prospectors discovered gold in what would become known as the Yankee Fork area of central Idaho in 1867. The area was worked on a small scale for more than a decade before the discovery of General Custer Mine. The General Custer Mining Company closed in 1888 and the district experienced a sharp decline. In 1899, 
Hainan, the town of Costa has five saloons, three stores, a hotel, and three boarding houses, but the town never established even one church. By 1910, most of the mines in the area were closed, and the Yankee Forks boom years came to an end. The combined population of Custer and the nearby Bonanza was just 66 people. The Silver Messenger reports just two families remaining in Custer in 1911, and then being fully abandoned the year following. Today, it has been purchased by the US Forestry Service and, in conjunction with the Friends of Custer Society, is slowly being made into a historic site. Some original buildings have already been renovated, some are in process, and many others are slated to be restored. Several buildings lost in a 1960s grass fire are due to be replaced with replicas. The forgotten town is a landmark for many people, such as tourists and especially paranormal investigators. In the old school house is a museum containing items left behind and showcases the town's unique history. Although interesting, you can't help but get an eerie feeling thinking about the people who once owned these items, as walking into one of these structures is like walking back in time. To think this town was once active with human energy and miners working every single day. And finally, in at number one, we have South Pass City, Wyoming. Only about 10 miles north of the Oregon Trail is the shell of a town that used to be a busy gold mining camp. Established in a small valley along the banks of Willow Creek, the town was born in 1867. The town was built there because gold was discovered in the Wind River Mountains. By 1868, South Pass City boasted over 250 buildings, 1,000 people, and hundreds of claims. The town was extremely busy as its half a mile long main street boasted numerous hotels, restaurants, general stores, two newspapers, doctors, a bowling alley, and dozens of saloons. The mining district continued to grow to as many as 3,000 residents. Miners looking for investors and newspapers promoting further settlement in the area exaggerated the region's amount of gold. But for South Pass City, its great success wouldn't last, and just two years after its establishment would begin to show its first signs of declining. Hitting a fall in early 1869, the town resurged briefly after outsider capital was poured into the area, but would fall again as expenses and hardships to recover the gold proved too costly for most miners. By 1872, the town was only occupied by only a few hundred people. In the end, South Pass would become a permanent ghost town. By 1949, the last of the pioneer families had moved on from South Pass City, and the buildings had fallen into disrepair. The grounds of the old town are known to be haunted, and Highway 287 that follows the route of the Oregon Trail over South Pass, which is the reason South Pass City ever existed, has had its fair share of ghost sightings. According to a local ghost story, a woman was driving home from a long day in Denver. Her friend had fallen asleep in the passenger seat. After passing through Jeffrey City, the driver spotted a dark hunched figure walking toward the road in the sagebush. About a half mile later, she saw the same figure closer to the road. She noted his pig coat as he became clearer. About a half mile later, still thinking about this man and his surprising reappearance, she reached over to wake her friend and request she take a turn driving. As a friend awoke, she saw the same man at the edge of the road, just crossing the white line onto the highway next to the car. Screaming, they accelerated away and compared descriptions. It was certainly the same man. Number five on this list is Pripyat, Ukraine. Once a growing and bustling Ukrainian city, Pripyat is now a shell of its former self and likely haunted. Located in northern Ukraine and about 90 kilometers from the capital of Kiev, the town used to have a community of 50,000 people. But in 1986, the Chernobyl power plant had a horrible disaster and the nuclear fallout that ensued was catastrophic. The plant had four nuclear reactors and on April 26, 1986, reactor number four blew up during a test. The Soviets were initially reluctant to make the disaster public but had no choice when nuclear reactors a thousand miles away in eastern Sweden began recording radiation levels ten times higher than normal. Fire from the explosion had sent plumes of highly radioactive fallout across the USSR and Europe. Being just two kilometers away from the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, Pripyat and its residents was dangerously close to the nuclear fallout. The human body isn't made to withstand that level of radiation and all areas near the blast had to be evacuated immediately. The town the town of Pripyat and all of its tens of thousands of residents was no exception. Decades have passed and this place has been eaten alive by time with no human intervention. With the horrible radiation followed as well, who knows what sort of creatures are lurking here now. Its buildings have decayed and been partially reclaimed by the elements and wild animals that roam through apartments people used to call home, sports complexes, and amusement parks. In the town post office, hundreds of letters from 1986 still sit waiting to be mailed. 
world. While radiation levels in Pripyat have dropped enough in recent years to allow former residents to make brief visits, scientists estimate that it could take several centuries before the town is once again safe for habitation. Number 4 on this list is Gukajima, Japan. Being 480 meters in length and 160 meters wide, this small island holds a lot of history and ghost stories. Just 15 kilometers from Nagasaki and in front of the Japanese coastline. In the late 1950s, the island had a population of over 5,200 people. The people that resided in the Gukanjima Island were mostly coal miners and their families. Since the island is so small at its peak in population, it was once the most densely populated place on the planet nine times the population density of Tokyo. Now the island is left completely abandoned and is effectively crumbling to pieces. The coal mining facility was previously called Battleship Island because its buildings and seawall make it resemble a warship. As for the island's fate, it was abandoned in the 1970s when petroleum fuels made coal obsolete. But abandoned does not mean empty, because the ghosts of the past have taken over the island and its buildings. The buildings were built by Korean and Chinese prisoners who were forced to work here from 1930 to just after World War II. The conditions of these forced laborers were hard, and some never made it back home. The people who worked here named the island Jail Island, or even Hell Island. After the war, the Japanese came to the island to work here themselves. In 1974, the mines started to run out of coal and people left the island. Soon, the island's uninhabited parts were reclaimed by nature. The weather conditions started affecting the concrete and buildings started falling apart. Sometimes, people camped out here, but that was a very dangerous thing to do. The government wanted to discourage people from going over on their own and therefore decided to make it open to the public. Even though tourists are allowed to visit the island today, the echoes of the past still linger here, especially in the minds of the relatives of those forced laborers that have been forced to work here and inside of the crumbling buildings. Fishermen who sail near the island claim they have seen strange flickering lights in the buildings, even though the island has no electricity. Strange noises have been heard and cold spots have been felt. People say they had the sensation of being watched and there are some claims of people that have been touched by unseen hands. Nowadays, people who have visited say the decaying settlement contains so many items from the 70s that it almost looks as if people still live there. Day trippers beware, though as exploring Hashima takes organization and many of the building structures are dangerously unstable. In the number 3 we have Kennecott, Alaska. It once flourished a flourishing town with businesses, shops, a train, and a lively community is now left as a ghost town. The town of Kennecott in Alaska was flooded with people after copper was discovered in 1900. After the discovery, a group of wealthy investors formed the Kennecott Copper Corporation to mine the mountains above the Kennecott and Root glaciers. In the 27 years the mine was in full operation, the company and town grew significantly in fortune and people, and at its peak Kennecott employed 600 people. But by 1938 the copper was mostly gone, the mine was shut down and the town was left abandoned. The town was abruptly abandoned by its citizens, leaving most of their possessions behind. Since the middle of the 1950s the place had been completely deserted. With the railroad discontinued service that same year. Reports of ghosts along the abandoned tracks of the Kennecott train have been claimed for decades, while other visitors report having seen old tombstones along the route of the tracks, though the gravestones then vanish by the time the visitors make their return trip. Others have reported hearing disembodied voices and phantom children laughing. Reportedly a 1990s construction project were halted after workers were scared away by the creepy sounds and unexplainable events. In a number 2 we have Exunan Tunich, Belize. I hope that's how you say it. Deep in the jungle of Belize lies an ancient ruins of an abandoned town that has been left to crumble. The town has been left abandoned for over 1,000 years, though before the abandonment of this large and populated town, Xunatunich was a thriving metropolis. The first construction at the site dates back to sometime in 200 AD, with the growth of the town continuing until its final days of functioning as a city. The town grew to consist of many temples and palaces, including its largest and most recognizable known as El Castillo. Exuna Tunich has lied abandoned since around 1000 AD. It is thought that due to consistent devastating events such as an earthquake and other natural disasters, caused the sudden evacuation of the large Mayan city around 700 AD. The disaster caused extensive damage to the main pyramid of Exuna Tunich. Although the city was reoccupied some time after, it only remained active for another 300 years before it was left completely unoccupied. After abandonment, the site remained empty, eventually being encapsulated by the surrounding jungle and nature. Until 
Exunatilla was rediscovered by explorers in the early 1890s. The name Exunatunich comes from the ghost stories that have haunted the ghost town for years. The ghost story of Exunatunich is rumoured to start in 1893 after the first sighting of the ghost happened. The first ghost sighting goes as one morning a man who was part of a research team working on the site saw what he described as a Mayan maiden ascending the staircase of the Exunatunich's main pyramid. This vision caught him by surprise so he continued to watch as the woman walked further up the stairs. Suddenly she stopped and turned to look at the man where he was able to get a glimpse of her glowing red eyes that pierced his soul. She then turned to continue her climb to the top of the pyramid where she would disappear amongst its stone columns. The shocked man quickly assembled a team to search for this woman, yet no trace of her was ever found. Since this sighting countless more visitors have reported to also spot the ghostly maiden who haunts Exuna Tunich. She is always described to be ascending El Castillo's stairs. To this day the sightings and reports from visitors continue. The ghost frequency is what gives Exuna Tunich its name which translates to the stone lady in the Maya language. Some believe that this Maya maiden have formerly lived within the city many years ago. Others believe that she was a human sacrifice, trapped to relive her last moments of ascending to the top of the pyramid where her ritual would have been conducted. Then there are a few who believe her to be some sort of ancient godly spirit linked to the site and the Mayan culture. And finally in at number 1 we have Calico, California. The ghost town of Calico can be found in California, midway between Barstow and Yermo. The beginning of the town started in 1875 and was built under the impression that there were prospects for silver in the Calico Mountains. But in the spring of 1883 many of the local miners left Calico when borax was discovered 3 miles east at Borate. Though Calico again boomed in 1884 as additional silver discoveries were made. Gaining a population of some 2500 the town supported 2 dozen saloons and gambling dives that never closed, as well as more establishments such as the church, public school, dance school and a literary society along with dozens of retail businesses. By the late 1800s Calico was bustling with prospectors searching for their fortunes and the Calico mining district became one of the richest in the state. Calico's final decline began when the price of silver fell in the 1890s, but the brake production kept it alive, even through the panic of 1906. They tried to hold on and borax for a time substituted for the shiny metal that had been the Calico's fortune. Calico kept churning out valuable minerals until it finally exhausted its supply in the 1920s. Calico was soon abandoned and left to gradually decay in the desert sun until little remained. But in 1951 it was purchased by the Walter Knott, an ex miner and rebuilt as a modern ghost town. He restored the town to mostly how it was in certain cases rebuilding some of the old structures as they were back in the 1880s. Considered one of the top haunted locations in California, Calico has its fair share of ghost stories, when one of the most active and known ghosts of the abandoned town is Lucy Lane. Lucy is often seen in a black lace dress walking back and forth between her home and store. Others have allegedly seen phantom school teachers and other residents who have been known to grab visitors legs or pinch their ankles. Some visitors have also reported seeing a floating red light inside the buildings, while other visitors have reported extreme cold spots throughout the mine and an eerie feeling in various places of the town. Coming in at number 5 we have Bodie, California. Located up in the Bodie Hills in Mono County, California near Yosemite. In 1859, four miners found a good place to look for gold in the hills near the California Nevada border. Bodie died in a blizzard not long after, but a small mining town sprung up at their camp. The town was home to 10,000 people. Bodie was a mining camp in 1859 where people had seen gold in its hills. Eventually, it turned to a well populated town. Though, like most mining towns, it saw its peak, its losses, and then its decline. Fast forward to 1962 and the town would be fully abandoned, although it already showed signs of decline with dwindling numbers at the start of the 20th century. A series of fires forced the last remaining residents to flee the town, leaving it almost exactly as it was in the early 1900s. Dinner tables are still set up, shops are still stocked with supplies and restaurants are still poised to serve long forgotten meals. Today the 110 silent building sits spaced out for traffic and people that aren't there. Buildings such as a barbershop, a church, a mill, a morgue and a leaning hotel is held up by a beam have been left untouched for 100 years. Though since it has been left and abandoned for years some of the buildings are in crumbing state of decay. While others stand strong, full of their original items but long devoid of their owners. There were also 16 saloons and thus a fair amount of danger. People were robbed and crimes occurred quite often though the curse of Bodhi has nothing to do with the fires or the shootings. It started because people started taking artifacts from the abandoned buildings. They take weather worn shoes or pieces of glass from shattered
busted windows somebody once ran off with a piano. Those items may seem like they have no value, but all objects carry equal significance in telling the story of Bodhi. Thus, the curse of Bodhi emerged where if you take something from Bodhi, bad luck will come around to get you. Because of the rumour spreading of a curse, people who stole items would send them back, often including heartfelt apology letters explaining that they didn't expect their fish to pass, or their romantic life to tank from stealing from Bodhi. Coming in at number 4 we have Bannock, Montana. The once bright star of Montana is now a ruin, a town in arrested decay, with few remaining storefronts, saloons and hotels. The town was founded in 1862 when a group of Pikes Peakers from the gold fields of Colorado set up camp on the banks of the creek, finding gold that miners staked claims and promptly failed to keep the find a secret. By the spring of 1863 the area boasted a population of 5,000. By 1864 Bannock had started to fade, losing importance. The remnants of the past still exist with empty buildings and weathered wood. Today over 60 structures remain standing, most of which can be explored. The town is known as a site for paranormal activity, it is known that ghosts of the abandoned town walk the streets of Bannock. The most common ghost story though is the story of Dorothy Dunn. In August 1916 Dorothy Dunn, her cousin Fern and a friend waded into a dredge pond and stepped into deep water, but none of the three knew how to swim. Luckily a passerby was able to save both Fern and the friend, but Dorothy was not as lucky. Today the site of the tragic drowning is referred to as Dorothy's Hole. Sometime after the accident Bertie saw a ghost of her friend upstairs in the hotel of the town. She recognised Dorothy by her long blue dress. Although Bertie rarely discussed the sightings, other visitors began to report seeing the spirit of a young girl in a long blue dress in the window of the hotel. Others have reported cold spots and some have reported trying to speak to the girl in a long blue dress. Bannock was filled with adult workers, crimes, murders and of course the notorious sheriff and outlaw Henry Plummer, whose vast gang terrorised and robbed southwest Montana for years. Henry Plummer was handsome while dressed and charismatic. He was also able to gain the trust of the area miners and was soon elected sheriff of the community. However, little did the citizens of Bannock know, but their new sheriff led a secret band of road agents called the Innocents who began to terrorise the travellers between Bannock and Virginia City, robbing and ending more than 100 men over the next several months. Once caught for his terrible actions, Henry Plummer met his fatal end at the hands of the town citizens. Today many say that the ghost of Henry Plummer haunts this old settlement, perhaps he wants to avenge his name. In at number 3 we have Jazarat Al Hamra, which is best known as the ghost town of the United Arab Emirates, is said to be the country's most haunted place, remaining a number of spooky events experienced by the locals and curious visitors. Jazarat Al Hamra is an abandoned village located to the south of the city of Ras Al Kamar, one of the seven emirates that form the U. AE. The coastal territory is the region's best example of a pre-oil village, displaying three distinct types of early and mid 20th century gulf architecture. The town of Ras Al Kamar is the crumbling remains of a once thriving fishing village. The name translates to Red Island for the red and bronze colour of the sand on which the town was built. The former tidal island was predominantly home to the Zab tribe, who by 1831 developed the area into a renowned pearling trade centre. It was home to over 4,000 inhabitants and dozens of fishing and trading ships, and with its good fortune came expansion that continued well into the start of the 20th century. But by 1968, Al Jazarat Al Hamra became nothing more than an abandoned town. Due to a clash between the tribe and Sheikh Saka bin Mohammed of Ras Al Kamar, due to some unclear reasons, thus most of them migrated to Abu Dhabi. The village consisted of 334 buildings, including 18 shops and 11 mosques, and is nearly unchanged since its people left in 1968. Al Jazarat Al Hamra, now filled in patch of land in the south of Ras Al Kamar, remained abandoned and untouched. However, rumor has it that this extraordinary, quiet, and silent village is extremely haunted by the jinns. People even got Gossip that they can hear the strange noise and disembodied voices near the beach of this ghost village. Many visitors also assert that they felt uneasy like danger was lurking, waiting for them when they pressed on further into the haunted village. Some of them even claim to have reported seeing unexplainable handprints on the ruined pillars and walls and experienced many more paranormal things within this haunted ghost town. In at number 2 we have Pyramid in Norway. Some say that the Soviet town of Pyramid in Norway was abandoned overnight and for a good reason. Located in Svalbard, an archipelago situated between Norway 
Norway and the North Pole. Pyramiden can be reached by boat from about mid-May until the beginning of October, when waters bordering the town are free from sea ice. Established in the 17th century, the town was used as a base for whaling and walrus trapping. Though at the start of the 20th century, the culture shifted to coal mining. At first, Pyramiden was a sleepy place with hardly any residents at all, but after World War II, the Soviets allocated more money to the town. They constructed dozens of new buildings, including a hospital, a recreation center called the Cultural Palace, and a large cafeteria. In the 1980s, the town's population reached its peak of more than 1,000 people. But not long, due to the wake of the Soviet Union's dissolution, the town would be left completely abandoned. As when the Soviet Union fell apart, mining stopped in Pyramiden, and the miners had to leave. On March 31st, 1998, the last coal was extracted from the mine, and the approximately 300 workers who still lived there began shipping out. The residents never returned, and today the town still stands much as it was when the last men departed. And finally, in at number one, we have Batstow Village, New Jersey. There are around 28 known ghost towns in New Jersey, but this one has to be the most terrifying. Founded in 1766, the Batstow Village was built primarily to accommodate once prosperous ironworks. At the time, the site possessed three valuable resources water for mills, abundant wood for charcoal, and naturally occurring bog iron. During the Revolutionary War, Batstow supplied the Continental Army with iron, while its remoteness protected it from British attack. In 1784, Batso was bought by William Richard, whose family owned and operated the ironworks for 92 years. Following the discovery of coal and ore in Pennsylvania, in the 1840s, the iron industry began to dwindle in the Batso village. Nervous they were going to run out of business, the Richards family exploited another abundant local resource, sand, to make glass. But in 1874, a house fire spread and destroyed the glass making facilities, remaining furnaces, and 17 houses that were in the town. Due to the destruction of the glass facilities, the town of Batso and the Richards family fell into bankruptcy. The Richards and many of the villagers moved away after the accident, leaving the site silent. In 1876, the property, along with huge tracts of land around it, was purchased by industrialist and businessman Joseph Wharton. With the plan of reinventing the declining town into an agricultural, foresting, and cranberry farm, but after his death in 1909, the land was held by a trust until purchased by the state in 1954 to form the Wharton State Forest. The state's plan for the town was to restore its 50 room mansion, as well as to rebuild the dam that was located on the lake. Though the efforts to reinvent Batso weren't enough to save it from its inevitable end. As when the state of New Jersey bought the village with a plan of improving it, the residents didn't see a future in the town, so they all left it, with roots that can be traced back to 1766 and the last remaining resident leaving in 1989. There are more than 40 structures still standing in the historic town, including a charcoal kiln, carriage houses, stables, ice and milk houses, a blacksmith general store, gristmill, and a wheelwright shop, though they are all left untouched since the last residents left in 1989. Coming in at number 5, we have Goldfield, Arizona. Being deemed as one of Arizona's most haunted places, we have the town of Goldfield. Founded in 1893, Goldfield was a promising land for gold mining. The town grew rapidly, gaining 1,500 residents during its first year. The space was quick to build businesses, including stores, a blacksmith, a butcher, a brewery, and three saloons. Though the town of Goldfield met its fall just as quickly as it was built up. After five short years, the gold ran out and people began to dwindle, eventually leaving it fully abandoned, securing its ghost town status. Being classified as a ghost town doesn't necessarily mean a place is haunted by ghosts, but this is not the case for the Goldfield ghost town. There's plenty of documentation and investigations that point to Goldfield being a paranormal active ground. It is known that a mysterious figure lurks within the shadows of the Goldfield ghost town, Bordello. It is unclear who this spirit would have been in life, yet it is commonly believed he was once a miner who lived in the town. Unexplainable knocks and bangs are heard in the building, and some unfortunate visitors have been scratched. This activity is attributed to a dark character who is usually seen wearing a cowboy hat. Just on the horizon of the Goldfield ghost town sits a landscape made ominous by its name and the legend surrounding it. The superstition mountains are cloaked in mystery and at the centre of many fables, making them notorious among the paranormal community. The Superstition Mountains carry many secrets, the most famous being the location of a supposed deposit of gold and riches in the Lost Dutchman's Gold Mine. A curse has kept this treasure safe since the days of Goldfield's mining boom. Many have set out to locate these riches and many have returned empty-handed or found only death. 
Countless adventurers have perished in the Arizona heat pursuing this chase. Their ghosts are said to now haunt the mountainside. Other secrets of the mountain have people believing that the hill is a place where evil spirits hid and told stories of a devil that lived behind the mountain. There's also a rumored apparition of a hugely tall skeleton named the Borrego Phantom, which appears to those exploring the mountain after dark. Another layer of creepiness is added to the mountain by the local legend that reptile looking people surface there after dark. All of these creepy mysteries are summed up pretty nicely in the Superstition Mountains name. In at number 4 we have Glen Rio, New Mexico. Found on the state border of Texas and New Mexico lies the town of Glen Rio. Founded in 1901, it was a town where wheat and cattle farmers settled and grew a community, being divided between two states made for some unusual customs in Glen Rio. The mail would arrive at a train depot on the Texas side but would have to be transported to the post office on the New Mexico side. The Texas side was part of a dry county so all the bars were on the New Mexico side. Because the gasoline tax was higher in New Mexico, all the service stations were on the Texas side. By 1920, Glen Rio had a hotel, a hardware store and a land office, as well as several grocery stores, service stations and cafes. Though Glen Rio's permanent population never rose above 30 people, the town survived with its tourist based businesses catering to the many travellers along Route 66. By 1985, only two residents remained in the small town and the Texas post office was the only business open. It too has long since closed. Other buildings have overgrown sites, missing windows, or debris surrounding them. The detritus of four decades when Glen Rowe welcomed tens of thousands, fed and entertained them, and sent them on their way towards Chicago or California. Number three on this list is Deception Island in Antarctica. Deception Island can be found just off the northwest Antarctic Peninsula in the South Shetland Islands. The island itself is quite remote and can only be reached by ship. The island was once known for being the safest harbor in Antarctica and used as a sealing and whaling station, having interested Britain, Chile and Argentina for a place of science and military. Where Britain ended up using it as a military base, but not for so, but not for long as it was deserted when volcanic activity destroyed it in 1960. Today, Deception Island is a popular Antarctic tourism destination and a scientific outpost for summer research teams from Spain and Argentina. With a history rich in destruction and conflict, the horseshoe shaped landmass can leave visitors with more than a touch of nostalgia and even the uneasy feeling that the island is true to its name that something here is not as it seems. Since it's been abandoned, the island is known to be a paranormal active hotspot, as many of the ghosts of Deception Island are plain to see with abandoned scientific research stations, airplane hangars, whaling operations and military bases being scattered around the island. Many who have visited Deception Island have said they felt uncomfortable, as though they're not alone in more ways than one, with many visitors having heard strange voices seemingly coming out of nowhere. Others claim to have seen shadowy figures, strange orbs of light are commonly seen there as well, only adding to the mystery and intrigue of such a place. With no immediate way to escape the island, making the risks of visiting the island and interacting with paranormal activity a little scarier. Number 4 on this list is Krakow, Italy. Even though the residents of Krakow, Italy are long gone, the town on the hill remains abandoned. Located atop a 1,300 foot cliff overlooking the river valley below, the town was founded in the 8th century. Krakow is only 40 kilometers inland from the Gulf of Taranto and a part of Italy's Basilica region. The first written evidence of the town's existence shows that it was under the possession of a bishop named Arnaldo in 1060 AD. The town's oldest building, the tall Tor Normana, predates the bishop's documented ownership by 20 years. The city emptied due to various natural disasters. In 1963, the people of Krakow, Italy saw its first substantial landslide, though life went on and the town kept on expanding. Then another tragedy hit. In 1656, the Black Death began to spread, where hundreds died and the population dipped. Though the town lived on, in 1972 a flood made conditions even more precarious. Despite living conditions being harsh and dangerous, as well as numerous bandit raids, there 
there were still many residents who refused to leave their beautiful city. Though, in 1980, an earthquake caused the town to be abandoned in its entirety. Now, Krakow is effectively a ghost town reduced to nothing but ancient ruins for half a century. It's an eerie look at a once thriving village that's now known as a ghost town. The oldest part of Krakow, built on solid bedrock, still remains standing. As beautiful as Krakow is, the land and location have proven not suitable for habitation. From its rich, tragic history and frozen in time as a medieval town, it's only safe to assume that the town is haunted by its past. And finally, number one on this list is Kencott, Alaska. Built in 1903, the town of Kencott was once bustling with people full of workers who came to the town in search of wealth and work in the mines. There were businesses, shops, a train connection, and a lot of life. Then, in 1938, the town was abruptly abandoned by its citizens, leaving most of their possessions behind. Since the middle of the 1950s, the place has been completely deserted. In the Kencott mines, it was not gold that people were digging for, like in so many other places, but copper. After copper was discovered in the area in 1900, a group of wealthy investors formed the Kencott Copper Corporation to mine the incredibly rich veins in the Jagged Mountains. In the 27 years, the mine was in full operation. The company made more than 100 million and a company town grew around the mine. It grew quickly into a major town with a school, a hospital, a saloon, and a brothel. But by 1938, the copper deposits were mostly gone. The mine was shut down and the town was abandoned. The railroad discontinued service that same year. Over the years, visitors exploring the ghost town and Ken Caught historical landmarks have claimed they've seen tombstones just off the old dirt path and in places where the old copper railroad used to be. Widespread and well-known stories of hauntings along the old railway track have been reported from the region. Back in the late 1990s, the state of Alaska was said to have begun developing a government housing tract out along the trail that once marked the old copper railroads. But during construction, workers so regularly recounted phantom visions and disembodied voices of both children and adults along the old copper railroad that keeping work up became impossible. Eventually, things got even worse, with construction workers having seen the tombstones and heard the wails of the past miners. In addition, the workers started losing their tools right out of their tool belts and boxes. It was enough to frighten off even the boldest and bravest public workers that the whole project had to be cancelled. In at number 5, we have Batstow Village in New Jersey. Located in New Jersey, Batstow Village is a historic community centered around the Batstow Iron Works. The site was ideal for iron work because there was water for mills, abundant wood for charcoal, and naturally occurring bog iron. The well preserved and lovingly restored village dates back to 1766. As the operation of iron work grew, so did the village. There were mills, cottages, and over three dozen structures and buildings still remain, many from the early 1800s. But by mid 1800s, iron production declined due to the discovery of coal ore. As the need for iron declined, then glass making was pursued by the town, but at that point, the population already started to dwindle. When Joseph Wharton purchased the property, he primarily focused on forestry and agricultural endeavors. After Joseph Wharton passed in 1909, the property was managed by a trust. The state of New Jersey began buying the land in the 1950s. The last resident to leave the town left in 1936, but not before strange disappearances occurred. According to local legend and a bunch of conspiracy theorists, Ong's hat offers a portal to a different dimension. In the 1970s, a few professors from Princeton fled there after being mocked by their quantum physics theories. This is when they claimed to have discovered interdimensional travel. According to other local legends, the devil is the 13th born son of the Leeds, the first inhabitants of New Jersey. Mother Leeds gave birth to a healthy baby baby, who within minutes transformed into this beast. This old ghost town is said to be a hotspot for the Jersey Devil activity, and in the last 50 years there have been numerous reports and encounters with the beast in this area. Some of these encounters include strange tracks along with hearing screams just outside of the village. One sighting of the Jersey Devil comes from a group that saw the creatures crossing the street in front of them. When visiting the village, some say you can feel his presence as if he's walking right behind you. In at number 4 we have Bodie, California. Located Located up in the Bodie Hills in Mono County, California, near Yosemite, in 1859, four miners found a good place to look for gold in the hills near the California-Nevada border. Bodie died in a blizzard not long after, but a small mining town sprung up at their camp. The town was home to 10,000 people. Bodie was a mining camp in 1859, where
where people had seen gold in its hills. Eventually, it turned into a well populated town. Though, like most mining towns, it saw its peaks, its losses, and then its decline. Fast forward to 1962, and the town would be fully abandoned. Although it already showed signs of decline with dwindling numbers at the start of the 20th century, a series of fires forced the last remaining residents to flee the town, leaving it almost exactly as it was in the early 1900s. With the dinner table still set, shops are still stocked with supplies, and restaurants are still poised to serve long forgotten meals. Today, the 110 silent building sits spaced out for traffic and people that aren't there. Buildings such as a barbershop, a church, a mill, a morgue, and a leaning hotel are hulled up by a beam and have been left untouched for 100 years. Though it has been left abandoned for years, some of the buildings are in a crumbling state of decay, while others stand strong, full of their original items, but long devoid of their owners. There were also 60 saloons and thus a fair amount of danger. People were robbed and crimes occurred quite often, though the curse of Bodhi has nothing to do with the fires or the shootings. It started because people started taking artifacts from abandoned buildings. They'd take weather-worn shoes or pieces of glass from shattered windows. Somebody once ran off with a piano. Those items may seem like they have no value, but all objects carry equal significance in telling the story of Bodhi. Thus, the curse of Bodhi emerged. If you take something from Bodhi, bad luck will come around to get you. Because of the rumor spreading of a curse, people who stole items would send them back, often including heartfelt apology letters explaining that they didn't expect their fish to pass or their romantic life to fail from stealing from Bodie. In at number three, we have Thurmond, West Virginia. The historic town of Thurmond, located in the heart of New River Gorge, was established by Captain William D. Thurmond in the 1880s. Captain Thurmond passed in 1910, but the town continued its growth. During its height in the 1920s, the town was flourishing with a number of businesses and facilities in the railway industry. Thurmond had two banks, two hotels, stores, a cinema, and offices. Yet after a series of setbacks, the Mons soon went from boom to bust. A number of factors played a role in the town's slow decline. The first problem was the increased rail competition and the emergence of cars. Then in 1930, a fire that led to the closure of the biggest hotel in the town, the Dunglen Hotel, only furthered the decline. The final fate of the town was the Great Depression, and by 1950, Thurmond was a ghost town. Thurmond saw a small revival during World War II when coal was in high demand, but it was not enough. After the coal fields began to play out. Today, Thurmond stands at just five person population, which is why it is nearly vacant ghost town, as the remaining residents either move on or pass away. The house and the land it sits on became the property of the National Park Service. Walking around Thurmond today is a sad reminder of the countless other boom towns which once thrived with human activity, but today are silent and forgotten. Many buildings have long since disappeared, either torn down or, as in the case of the well loved hotel, burnt to the ground in suspicious circumstances. Many of the family homes lie in increasingly decaying condition, while some have disappeared altogether, leaving only behind a white picket fence and wildflowers, which still blossom untended each year. The eerie atmosphere of Thurmond led many visitors to believe that this almost abandoned town is haunted. In at number two, we have Cahaba Ghost Town. Alabama is home to many small towns. While some of these towns have very few residents, others are true ghost town because they've been completely abandoned. It's no secret that small abandoned towns give off an eerie vibe. As a matter of fact, one Alabama ghost town in particular that fits the bill is Old Cahaba. The small town of Old Cahaba is located in Dallas County. From 1820 to 1826, this small town served as Alabama's first state capital. Before the Civil War, Cahaba was a busy trade city located at the junction of the Alabama and Cahaba rivers. Over the years, floods and decay have affected this historical town. Thus, by 1900, the town was completely abandoned. Today, Old Cahaba is Alabama's most famous ghost town. Many buildings still stand, like the church, schoolhouse, and some houses. However, they have been left untouched for decades. You can still walk the streets of Cahaba and see the ruins and abandoned buildings, but make sure to keep your eyes peeled for the ghostly orbs that have been reported to appear in the garden maze at the home of C.C. Peggs. Additionally, many locals share similar ghost stories from the ghost town. While it's known that Cahaba is filled with paranormal activity, one groundskeeper that works at the new Cahaba Cemetery has reported hearing voices as they worked. While tourist groups claim to have recordings of unusual sounds, and others say they've captured unexplained lights or shadows in photographs. Another site that's 
reportedly haunted is the Barker House. This mansion was built in 1860 by Stephen Barker and contained slave quarters behind the house. After people started leaving the town in 1870s, the house was bought by Samuel McGurdy Kirkpatrick. It burned in 1935 and was rebuilt, but today it's in pretty bad condition. The only people usually left inside are paranormal investigators. Reports from said investigators include seeing a ball rolling across the floor on its own and a stuffed animal appearing to communicate with something else in the room. But the most well known haunting in Cahaba is Pegg's ghost. Colonel Christopher Claudius Peggs was the leader of the 5th Alabama Regiment and was wounded leading a charge at the Battle of Seven Pines in Virginia in May 1862. He died from his wounds two months later on July 15th. As the story goes, a couple were walking behind Peggs' home in the spring of 1862. As they walked, they spotted a ball of light. They tried to touch it, but their hands went right through it. It disappeared, but later came back and followed the couple. Due to all the mysterious crimes that happened in association to Peggs, seeing an orb around his former house is considered a bad omen and possibly even a supernatural warning. And finally in at number 1 we have Centralia, Pennsylvania. Located in a quiet valley of Columbia County, Pennsylvania, it's one of the states least likely and least publicized tourist attractions. Centralia, Pennsylvania once thriving with 14 active coal mines and 2500 residents in the early 20th century. But by the 1960s its thriving business and population hit a decline and most of its mines were abandoned. Still at that point over 1,000 people still resided in the town and said Charlie was far from dying until a coal mine fire began below. In 1962, a fire started in a landfill and spread to the never ending coal tunnels that miners dug thousands of feet below the surface. And despite repeated attempts to extinguish the flames, the fire still burns to this day. 20 years after the fire started, however, a Centralia, Pennsylvania began to feel the effects of its underground fire, as residents started passing out in their homes from carbon monoxide poisoning. The trees began to die and the ground turned to ash. Roads and sidewalks began to buckle. But some residents didn't want to leave, despite the health risks, and for the next 10 years legal battles and personal arguments between neighbours became the norm. The local newspaper even published a weekly list of who was leaving. Finally, Pennsylvania invoked eminent domain in 1993, by which point only 63 residents remained. Officially they became squatters in houses they had owned for decades. In 2013, the remaining residents, which were fewer than 10, won a settlement against the state. Each was awarded $349,500 and ownership of their properties until they die, at which point Pennsylvania will seize the land and finally demolish what structures remain. In at number 5 we have St. Elmo, Colorado. St. Elmo, Colorado was a former gold mining camp in Chaffee country. Today it is one of the best preserved ghost towns in Colorado as the entire district was placed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1979. The area was originally settled in 1878 and was made official in 1880 when gold and silver began to bring many people to the area. At one point the population reached more more than 2,000 people. In 1881, the Denver, South Park, and Pacific Railroad came through the area and a station was built in St. Elmo. From here, the tracks continued to Romney, Hancock, and through the historic Alpine Tunnel. St. Elmo was considered the main source of supplies arriving by train for the area settlers and eventually several merchandise stores, five hotels, a telegraph office, a town hall, five restaurants, two sawmills, a schoolhouse, a weekly newspaper called The Mountaineer, and numerous saloons and dance halls filled the town. The miners worked at several mines throughout the area that were rich in silver, gold, copper and iron. In 1890 a fire destroyed the business section and the town was never entirely rebuilt. This was about the same time that St. Elmo's peaked in population with about 2,000 residents. Afterward many of the mines were depleted and many miners moved out of the area. More mines continued to fail in the ensuing years and the closure of the Alpine Tunnel in 1910. The state of the structures paired with depleting mines led many in the community in search of new more prosperous mining towns to call home. The railroad continued to run until 1922 and it has been said that the rest of St. Elmo's population rode the last train out of town never to return. In 1969 the United States recognized St. Elmo as a historic district and soon after it became a unique tourist attraction that's open to the public, showcasing what life was like in the old west. There is no shortage of urban legends and reports of hauntings in St. Elmo, but the most common occurrence of paranormal activity centers around the town's most notable family. To this day one of the members of the Stark family still can be spotted in the ghost town. Anton's only daughter Annabelle resided there until she died in 1960. As legend has it, Annabelle continued her promise to protect the city even after she took her last breath. 
In at number 4 we have Rhyolite Nevada. Founded in 1904 and abandoned by 1916, Rhyolite was one of several short lived boom towns from the late gold rush era. People were drawn to the desert on the edge of Death Valley by the promise of gold found amongst quartz in local mines. And by 1906 the town had all the promising indicators of permanence and the largest population in the area. The town citizens had an active social life including baseball games, dances, basket socials, whist parties, tennis, a symphony, Sunday school picnics, basketball games, Saturday night variety shows at the opera house and pool tournaments. In 1906 Countess Majoski opened the Alaska Glacier Ice Cream Parlor to the delight of the local citizenry. That same year an enterprising miner Tom T. Kelly built a bottle house out of 50,000 beer and liquor bottles. But in 1907 the US financial markets were rocked by panic that saw closures of banks, businesses and mines. Rhyolite began to falter. The mine closed in 1911. Some claim that Rhyolite, about 120 miles northwest of Las Vegas, was once home to thousands of people, though not much remains of its glory days which lasted less than 20 years. Set up in 1905, the town was a mining hotspot. But after the richest ore was exhausted, workers left for a new pasture and the population had dropped to close to zero by 1920. Industrialist Charles M. Schwab invested heavily in Rhyolite's infrastructure, which boasts a school, electric lights, water mains, newspapers, a hospital and even an opera house, some of which can be seen today. There are only around 10 significant structures yet the site is very evocative. The crumbling remains set against a backdrop of stark desert hills. In at number 3 we have Garnet, Montana. Found in Montana, the abandoned town of Garnet was another gold rush town that drew thousands of hopeful miners. Between 1862 and 1916 gold was mined from the area. During the peak of the town it had hotels, saloons, schools and stores in the midst of the town's biggest years. A 1912 fire burned down half of the town and what was lost was not rebuilt. Many of the remaining structures were in poor condition even when they were lived in and regularly visited. This marked the decline of the town as after 1917 the mine began to offer less and less and by the time of World War I the town was almost fully abandoned. Garnet is perhaps the best preserved coast town in the state of Montana. There are plenty of people who believe the abandoned buildings are still home to some of the residents who once lived there. Some visitors have reported hearing laughter and music coming from Kelly's saloon which is the most common occurrence. I quote, We didn't experience anything bordering on the supernatural during our visit but we did find the beautifully preserved artifacts to be windows into Garnet's incredible past. Coming in at number 2 we have Jerome, Arizona. Located in Arizona you will find the ghost town of Jerome. Once a copper mining town, Jerome was the third largest town in the early 1900s. Its streets were filled with 37 saloons, 13 bordellos and a meager 4 churches in 1917 and again in 1926 after a mine blast damaged the original. A series of ill fated events at this site would almost lead one to call it cursed. When the great depression hit conditions in the town took a sharp downturn. Plagued with man made disasters and poor fortune, Jerome's population gradually dwindled from thousands to somewhere between 20 to 50 residents. Finally in 1950 the town was abandoned for good. A number of visitors have recounted other mysterious sightings. Visual apparitions range from human human shaped figures that roam the halls and stairways of the old hotel to a friendly animal that is said to scratch and meow at the doors. Additionally one of the town's most well known ghosts is said to lurk at the town's community centre. Formerly called Lawrence Memorial Hall, the building is more often familiarly termed Spook Hall due to several strange happenings. With all the other apparitions wandering about this historic town, the cemetery of course known as the most haunted place in the whole town. Visitors here have made numerous reports of dark figures moving about, the sound of ethereal foot steps and the sounds of distant voices. The old cemetery includes graves dating from 1897 to 1942. And finally in the number 1 we have Cerro Gordo, California. Cerro Gordo is a ghost town located in Death Valley and is considered one of the best abandoned places in California. Cerro Gordo means fat hills in Spanish, it was named this for the vast amount of silver it contained. By the end of 1869 the city flourished and became well known for its promising business. By 1871 Cerro Gordo was well established as a mining town. The American hotel was completed that year as were several other permanent structures, a general store, restaurants and saloons. At its height, the town had 5,000 residents. In 1875, Cerro Gordo suffered a series of setbacks, necessitating the shutdown of its furnaces. These problems resulted from a scarcity of ore in the mine, which had lasted for several months, and the temporary drying up of its water supply. In addition, by late 1876, a fire accident happened through some of the mine buildings and the union shaft, and the furnaces were closed the following February due to the disaster. A more lethal blow was dealt by falling lead and silver. 
crisis, effectively ending this era of activity at Cerro Gordo. Because of all the tragedy that occurred in Cerro Gordo, there has been multiple paranormal investigations held at the grounds of the abandoned town. While the new owner of the town was purchasing it, he was warned that they might have some visitors hanging around, and by visitors they meant spirits. One of the now owner's ghost stories goes along the lines of as he was walking toward the bunkhouse, he looked at the window, the curtain pulled to the side, and a little face poked out. Under the assumption that the contractors were staying in the bunkhouse, he asked when they were leaving, and he was told that they're gone for two weeks. So a little uneasy, he locked up the door and went for a hike. By the time he got back, the kitchen light was on, even with the lock still on the door. Coming in at number five, we have Grafton, Utah. Located just a few miles away from Zion National Park in Utah, the now abandoned town of Grafton can be found. The town was originally established in 1859 when five Mormon families nearby were led to establish a town they called Wheeler to plant cotton, which would have been a profitable commodity during the Civil War. After only two years, the town was struck by a massive flood starting on January 8th of 1862 that washed away the entire town. However, the pioneers did not give up that easily and moved about a mile upstream and founded a new town named Grafton. They grew cotton, alfalfa and wheat, but life was harsh and many residents lost their life due to the diseases and various accidents. The mortality rate was also extremely high, which accounts for about 77 total graves in the nearby cemetery. The town flourished for a while despite reoccurring floods, with a church and adobe schoolhouse being built in 1886, but when the Hurricane Canal was built in 1906, many families started to move to Rockville and Hurricane, and by 1920, only three families remained in the town, and in 1944, the town's last residents, Frank Russell and his wife Ellen, moved as well. And although the town is now well maintained by the non-profit volunteer organization of the Grafton Heritage Partnership Project, its dark past can still be felt when exploring the area. People have reported hearing ghostly footsteps over the creaky floors and the empty buildings, as well as the breath of ghostly souls on the back of their necks. The entire town gives visitors a feeling as if being watched, and the shadowy figures can sometimes be spotted in the windows. Another visitor of the ghost town visited the basement of the Russell home and claimed that they found a chair sitting in the middle of the basement with a mark on it as if someone had recently sat on it. They had been exploring for over an hour at this point and had not encountered another person on the way to town or the entire time they were there, but for some reason the print looked brand new, with not a single speck of dust on it. After filming for a few moments in the basement and recording into the silence, they felt a rush of air, as if someone had just walked past them, which scared them, and they decided it was time to leave. There are even rumors of skinwalkers lurking in the area. Even the cemetery itself has many reports of people hearing crying, laughing, and chilling screams, especially late in the day and when it's overcast. Some people have even seen a woman in a dress with her hair in a bun, walking around the cemetery, sobbing, but when they approached her, she disappeared into thin air. There is no doubt that there is definitely a very uncomfortable feeling while walking around the gravestones, which isn't surprising knowing the sad history of the people laid to rest there. In at number four, we have Deadwood, South Dakota. The town of Deadwood is located in South Dakota and gained attraction in the gold rush of 1876. In 1875, a miner named John B. Pearson found gold in a narrow canyon in these northern Black Hills. This canyon became known as Deadwood Gulch because of many dead trees that lined the canyon walls at the time. Practically overnight, the tiny gold camp boomed into a town that played by its own rules that attracted outlaws, gamblers, and gunslingers along with gold seekers. At its height, the city had a population of 5,000, attracting larger than life Old West figures back then. The business district comprised largely of saloons, dance halls, card parlors, and bodacious bordellos. They were all hungry for gold and did whatever they had to in order to get some. The business did whatever they could to serve the gold diggers, and sometimes that led to a little bit of conflict. Because of this, the now ghost town still lives with stories of its dead residents haunting present day hotels and saloons. In 1876, Deadwood survived a smallpox epidemic that nearly wiped out the whole town. There were so many infected that multiple tents were erected to quarantine the strip. In addition, it suffered three major fires. One devastating fire occurred on September 26, 1879, destroying more than 300 buildings and consuming the belongings of many inhabitants. Many numerous economic hardships also followed, pushing it to the verge of becoming another Old West ghost town. One of the most paranormally active sites in the ghost town is the Adam House. Built in 1892, after owner W.E. Adams had a stroke on the premises, his wife was so disturbed by the sounds of his ghost still walking around rocking the rocking chairs and so forth, that she moved and left the house untouched, exactly as it was when he died. Now visitors and employees
police report having seen a rocking chair rock on its own, encountered a shadowy man standing at an upstairs window, and heard voices and footsteps in rooms throughout the house. In at number three, we have Tlingua in Texas. The town of Tlingua, Texas, was once a bustling mining town full of life, wealth, and promise. Today, it's a ghost town with abandoned mine shafts, a general store, an old jail, a church, and multiple ghost houses. Tlingua became of interest to local miners in the late 1800s when they discovered cinnabar, a red mercury sulfide. A man by the name of Jack Dawson discovered that mercury could be extracted from the cinnabar, and by 1900, there were four mining companies in the area with a population of over 2,000 people. The Chisos Mining Company owned the entire town of Tlingua. At one point, they built a general store, a post office, a hotel, a school, a theatre, and even a telephone service. Though conditions in the mine were tough, with the seven day work week being the standard, working long days in the desert heat led many miners to lose their lives in the mines. To make matters worse, the Chisos Mining Company even paid their workers in coupons, which could only be spent at the company owned store. The decline started once the mines dried up, companies left, and the people left with them. One of the scary the scariest parts of the town is the church, which sits on the hill above the ghost town. One quote says, As we approached the church, the door opened all by itself. Inside the church, visitors report an eerie feeling when entering the church. Moreover, several others report experiencing blackouts, blurred vision, and even hallucinations while exploring the abandoned town. Researchers theorize that this is due to low frequency sound waves in the area that are able to alter people's perceptions of the things around them and as well as disorient them. In at number two, we have Ludlow, Colorado. Located Located about 12 miles north of Trinidad, Ludlow, Colorado, is a ghost town known for an infamous event in 1914. A former mining camp, it was the location of the Ludlow Massacre. Beginning in 1910, the resident coal miners grew unhappy over their dangerous working conditions and began to debate a strike. By 1913, a strike had begun, much to the dismay of owner John B. Rockefeller. On April 20th, 1914, there was a massacre in Ludlow, where the Colorado National Guard and Colorado Fuel and Iron Company guards attacked miners, burning their tents to the ground. Known as the Ludlow Massacre, 25 people lost their lives. The massacre was the height of the Colorado Coalfield War, which began a year earlier in 1913. Two coal mining counties, Las Animas and Hurufano, were the centers of the conflict. The United Mine Workers of America led the strike against the Colorado Fuel and Iron, owned by Rockefeller. They were upset over the horrible working conditions. Both parties led attacks back and forth over the years. Today, the old company town of Ludlow still stands as a ghost town, and the site of the tents city is also kept reserved, now under the care of the United Mine Workers of America. A monument to the deceased was also built by the Union at the site. In addition, the cellar where so many innocents perished is still in place. The doorway can still be seen and the dark depths of the pit can still be viewed. Though this isn't recommended as many people who visit the abandoned ghost town report a strange feeling when looking through the doorway, and even worse, possible whispers around them with an unexplainable source. And finally, in a number one, we have Helltown, Ohio. The abandoned town known as Helltown can be found in the Suyahoga Valley in Ohio. There sits an eerie deserted town known by locals to be haunted. No people live in the area anymore, though there are still remnants of the lives of former residents left behind. The whole town is surrounded by hazardous roads that seemingly lead to nowhere. Locals believe this was done to confuse any wandering explorers. But the Helltown Church seems to have inspired the town's ominous name. The tiny white church is in the center of Helltown and is central to all local theories. Some say the church was a place of worship for practicing Satanists who still lurk around the closed off roads, hoping to recruit unwelcome visitors. Others believe the town was evacuated after a chemical spill that resulted in bizarre mutations of the residents and animal population. The legend of the Peninsula Python stems from this theory. There even sits an abandoned school bus in the town with legends of its own. The story goes that the bus was carrying a group of high school students who were going to one of the ski resorts near Boston when an elderly woman flagged down the bus. She was in a panic state and explained that there was a young boy in her house who was seriously hurt. The bus driver, in an attempt to help, turned down her driveway and drove into the woods hoping to help the boy. When the bus approached the house, Satan worshippers swarmed it and sacrificed all those on board. The bus sat back there for over 30 years, standing as a warning to all who decide to venture into Helltown. A local paranormal investigator set out to research the abandoned town and to his surprise, what he discovered was truly frightening. He describes Helltown as not just truly abandoned, but is home to many spirits and hauntings. His personal experience with a ghost encounter was returning to his car to find strange people looking into his car windows. Both times the people vanished as soon as they saw him approaching the car before he had a chance to speak to them.